the question given to us is in a vertical double acting steam engine the connecting rod is 4.5 times the crank the weight of the reciprocating parts is 120 kg and the stroke of the piston is 440 mm so m is equal to 120 kg and stroke is 440 mm so stroke is equal to 2r so r will be equal to 220 mm or 0.22 meter the engines runs at 250 rpm so omega is equal to 2.2 250 divided by 60 so that will come out to be 26.18 radian per second and the steam pressure net effective load on the steam due to steam pressure is 25 kilonewton so fp is given as 25 kilonewton so that will be equal to 25000 newton when the crack has turned through an angle of 120 degree so theta is given as 120 degree from the top dead center so they have asked to determine these five parts that is thrust in the connecting rod second is pressure on the slide bars third is the initial force on the crank pin fourth is thrust on the bearing and fifth is the turning moment on the crankshaft so first of all they have been given a vertical double acting steam engine and theta is 120 degree so its diagram will be like this that is this is a slider or piston this is the line of stroke this is connecting rod this is crank this is bearing theta is given as 120 degree it will it is rotating like this so first part in the first part we have to define thrust in the connecting rod so that is fc fc uh, we all know that fc cos beta this angle is beta is equal to the net effective load that is f so first of all we have to determine the f what is f in vertical vertical engine f is equal to fp minus fi minus of ff plus of mg this will be equal to zero because they haven't talked about any friction between the ground and the slider so this will be equal to the zero now f is equal to the fp minus fi plus of mg fp they have given 25000 now we have to define fi so what will be fi fi will be equal to f r omega square cos theta plus of cos 2 theta upon n so that will be equal to mass they have given is uh, 120 kg mass of the reciprocating part is 120 kg so that will be equal to 120 r they have given is we have calculated r as 0.22 meter so that will be equal to 0.22 into omega we have calculated 26.18 cos of 120 degree plus of cos of 240 divided by n n is 4.5 because length of connecting rod is 4.5 times the crank so n will be equal to 4.5 so fi will comes out to be minus of 11057.66 newton so net effective load will be fp minus of fi plus of mg so that will be equal to 25000 minus of minus 11057.66 plus of one what is the mass 120 120 into 9.81 so net effective force will be 37235 newton so you have noticed one thing that if theta is 120 degree 
inertia force will become comes out to be negative if inertia force comes out to be negative then it may it will support the net in the in the movement direction it will support the force driving force which will be acting on the slider so when inertia force will be negative let's first of all we will write the inertia force equation that is mr omega square cos theta plus of cos 2 theta upon n if this comes out to be negative then inertia force will be negative and if inertia force will be negative then net effective force will increase means inertia force will actually support this net effective force so if they ask the question that at what angle theta inertia force will support the net effective force if they give the option like this 30 degree 45 degree 60 degree or 90 degree so if cos theta plus cos 2 theta upon n comes out to be negative then it will actually support the driving force on the slider so moving on to the moving on to our question uh, we have calculated the net effective load on the slider now we have to calculate thrust in the connecting rod so let's draw this diagram again this is slider this is line of stroke this is connecting rod this is net effective load this is angle is beta and this is fc so fc cos beta will be equal to the net effective load so what is beta so to calculate beta we will use sin rule this angle is 120 degree it doesn't look like 120 degree but i am assuming it is 120 degree this angle is beta crank length is 0.22 meter uh, and obliquity ratio they have given as 4.5 so let's say this length is l this length is r so l by r is equal to 4.5 by applying sin rule l upon sin 120 degree is equal to r upon sin of beta so sin of beta will be sin 120 into r by l so from here beta comes out to be Eleven point one degree. Now putting this beta in equation, this equation, we will get F. The equation is F C cos beta is equal to F. So F C cos of eleven point one degree is equal to F. What is F? F is thirty seven thousand. 235 newton 37235 newton so fc will come out to be 37944.3 newton now in the second part they have asked pressure on the slide bar pressure on the slide bar is nothing but fc sin beta so second part answer is fc sin beta that is equal to 37944.3 sin of 11.1 that comes out to be 7168.55 newton in the third part they have asked tangential force on the crank pin so tangential force on the crank pin we know that Ft is equal to Fc sine of theta plus of beta. How it comes out? It comes out by like this. 
this is slider this is line of stroke this is correcting rod this is crank this is fc this is theta plus or beta this angle is theta this is beta so this is theta plus beta and this is ft tangential force on the crank pin so ft will be equal to fc that is 37944.3 into sin of 120 plus of 11.1 ft is equal to 28593.44 newton now in the fourth part we have to find thrust on the bearings so thrust on the bearing is nothing but radial force acting on the bearing so that will be equal to fr is equal to fc cos of theta plus beta so fc will be equal to 37944.3 into cos of 131.1 that is equal to minus of 2494.3.64 newton so fr is equal to minus of 2493.64 newton and in the last part they have asked turning moment on the crankshaft so turning moment on the crankshaft will be equal to p is equal to ft into r ft we have calculated that is 28593.44 28593.44 into r r that is 0 0.22 it comes out to be 6290.7 newton meter thank you